I recently did a video on the Springfield Prodigy where I titled the video, the Springfield Prodigy is the best entry level 2011 or double stack 1911 on the market, hands down. And in the comment section, everybody was like, Ooh, well, you have to try this gun and try this gun. And that, try that one, try that one, that one's better. And of all those, the most common requested gun was this. The TSAS DD9DS, where DS stands for double stack. So I got it. So this is roughly $750 on the streets. And um, it is a nine millimeter double stack 1911. And if, from a feature standpoint, on paper, and just kind of looking at it, it has a ton of features. You have the ability to mount a red dot on it. You got a, a ambidextrous safety. You, of course, you have the grip safety. You have some actually, admittedly, nice iron sights, front and rear. And then, of course, you have your double staff magazine with this is a 17 plus one. You have your skeletonized trigger, which kind of has this like straight combo curve. Doesn't really know how it wants to identify itself. Um, and of course, you have your rail for your lights. And I mean, by and large, it, it has what you need and it's built in turkey so how does the gun look well when i look at this gun the word that keeps coming to mind is classic especially when you start talking about the top half of this gun it has very classic lines that's classic 1911 serrations in the slide classic looking safety and then once you start getting towards the bottom it just turns into a, a party <laughs> like so it goes from classic to like Showtime! So, you know, you have these more kind of modern style looking grips. Um, you know, you have a skeletonized hammer with this flat face, but then kind of a little bit of curvature to it. So it's almost kind of like the opposite of a, of a, of a mullet, where it's like, you know, business in the front, party in the back. Actually, that would be the exact definition of a mullet. So up, up top, business in the front, right? Nice and classic. And then down here, it's like party time. Yes! Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. All the ammo used in this video was brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. The ergonomics on this gun are very sterile is the best way that I can put it. So you have this, like I said, it's a kind of, a, it's a very modern aesthetic grip, but as far as the actual ergonomic on, ergonomics on the gun, as far as the way the grip feels in my hand, it kind of feels like a block, if I'm just gonna be honest, because it is kind of more of a squared off, it means rounded, you don't have like any sharp edges or anything like that, but in hand, it feels kind of blocky. Not in a bad way, but not in a overly uber ergonomic way where it makes me feel like I'm holding something incredibly special. Um, it's enough to get the job done. You're not gonna complain about it, but you're not gonna rave about it either. Now, keep in mind, we are talking about a $750 gun here. So keep that within the context of what I'm talking about. Because, yeah, because people don't understand, con don't understand context sometimes, and then they're like, well, why did you say that? Well, I'm talking about it within the context of being a $700 gun. All right, um, so from, from that perspective, and what I'm not doing is I'm not gonna compare it to any other 1911s or double stack 1911s because I'm going to do that in another video. So I'm just talking about this gun within the frame of itself. So from an ergonomic standpoint, like I said, it feels enough. Like it's, it is a double stack 1911, but it doesn't have a bull barrel. So that means you're not going to have that extra weight that you normally have up front with a bull barrel, which keeps the muzzle flipped down. Now, do I notice it? Ever so slightly, but if you're not really accustomed to shooting 2011s, it's not something you're really gonna notice. It's gonna be something that you're like, oh, this, this feels good. Especially if you haven't shot a 2011 before, which is a good thing because this is an entry level 2011 and it's a, for all intents and purposes, as far as I feel about it now, it's a pretty good one. All right, let's talk about the way this thing shoots. And first, let's start with this trigger. So. Like I talked about before, you have this flat face trigger with the little curvature at the top and the skeleton's nice hammer. That's all aesthetics, right? But it actually feels really good on your finger because when you get here and you start decompressing your finger on the actual trigger, you start noticing this little curvature and it creates a like nice little landing pad for your fingertip. This actually, the trigger feels really good on my finger. As far as the actual trigger under live fire, it's a 2011, it's kind of hard to mess up a 2011 trigger because 
almost every 1911 trigger feels good. But here you have this take up, which is, it's smooth enough. And then you hit this wall here and then it breaks. And then you have your reset right there. It's a positive reset, very positive reset. Almost forcefully pushes your finger back out. And then you come out, boom, boom, boom. So the trigger is nice, especially for where you're coming in from an entry point standpoint, $750, where normally 2011s or Dubstack 1911s are like a billion dollars. Damn good trigger for that price point. I'll give it that for sure. When you start talking about the way a gun shoots, you got, you got you factor in the way it feels in your hand, the way the trigger feels on your fingertip, the way the trigger engages. All of those things, even where your hand lands on the gun and where it has the ability to place on the gun. All of those things come into play when we start talking about how the gun shoots and how it runs. And then finally, when it comes to adding everything together in terms of how this gun shoots, you have your sights. Now the sights on this gun are actually really nice. Um, they got, they have this rear serrated edge. It's, I'm pretty sure it's designed to minimize glare and all that stuff. Um, I guess it does it, <laughs> but I do like it. I like my eyes visually like engaging with the back of this rear sight. And then this front sight appears pretty nice too. Not as high dollar as some of the sights on other guns, but like I said, we're all talking about a $750 gun. But when it comes together and you really put it on here, the natural point of aim is there. It's just not as good as some of the other guns that I've had. Now that can be rather subjective because everybody's hands and body structure are a little bit different and body mechanics are different. But for me, when I pull out, pull out, it's not as intuitive as other guns. And I'm talking marginally, marginally. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of picking at it, honestly, because at, at the end of the day, I will be able to shoot this better than any polymer gun out there because that's just kind of how double stack 1911s are. And so for me, there's a slight difference in intuitiveness, but it feels good. Like, I mean, it's still very, very much shoots like a 2011. Yeah. And then, like I said, this rear sight, something about it. It just, let's take it for you. What it does, this is kind of double step here. It kind of forces my eyes to focus through this funnel. It kind of creates a natural visual funnel for me. Now, before you finish watching this video, I want to quickly talk about the hearing protection that I'm wearing in this video. These are the AKT1 Blackout Wireless In-Ear Hearing Protection with Bluetooth. I like to call them the AirPods for shooters. I say for shooters because AirPods don't protect your hearing, but these do. They are hands down my favorite in-ear hearing protection that I've ever used, and I mean ever. They have an NR25 dB auto noise blocking. They can enhance your hearing by six times. They have advanced noise cancellation, Bluetooth connectivity with high fidelity speakers so you can take phone calls and listen to music. They have a battery life of 10 hours with an additional 30 hours in a charging case, and they're low profile and stylish enough to fit in not only at the gun range, but in your gym, while you're studying, working, at school, at home, you name it. I'm in love with these things. And now they're finally available on my store at shop.mrcoleonnoir.com. Or you can just click the link in the description section of this video. And it's kind of oddly visually relaxing. I, I, I know, sounds weird, but I'm a weird guy. I love to shoot and say weird shit. See, there I noticed it. There I noticed, that was one of the few times that I noticed that this wasn't a bull barrel and that way the front caused the gun to feel a little bit more flippy than normal. But like I said, I'm, I'm pinching at stuff at this point. Um, so now, who is this gun for? Because like I said, in my video, I said that the Springfield Prodigy is the best entry level 2011. And after shooting this, granted this is my very first time shooting this gun, do I still feel the same way? Absolutely, I do. Um, for the price, this is a damn good gun. $750 for somebody who's just absolutely needs to have a double stack 1911, but they don't have the money to pony up for say a Springfield Prodigy, which is 1400. Me personally, if, if I only had $700, I probably would buy something else that's not a 2011 or double stack 1911. However, you're not me. So for somebody who absolutely wants a double stack 1911, they genuinely can only afford $800-ish to spend on it, you will get this gun and you will be happy with it. Just don't shoot any other 2011s. Not because this gun is bad in that sense, but it could, it could what did they say? Comparison is a thief of joy or happiness. 
it may cause you to compare it in a way that you probably don't want to. Um, if you get this gun, get it, shoot it, enjoy it. It's just, it runs though. So there it is, the TSAS Duty 9 DS. TSAS or CSAS or seashells, seashells by the seashore with the sold out sea, sea monk. Okay, yeah, that just got weird. <laughs> Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.